Let me just start again. Good morning. Um, it's my pleasure to welcome Tony Carr from Image Africa um, to give us some insights on designing online conferences. Over to you, Tony. Thank you very much um, for this opportunity, uh, Marie and the FODES team. Okay, so this is all visible now. That's good. Um, and basically, I'm just picking up on some of the research that I'm doing. Um, some excerpts here that might be interested. Um, I'm going to talk about conferences and learning events, some of the issues around online conference design before the pandemic, some of the issues about online conference design during the pandemic, and maybe if there's time, some discussion about where we go from here. Um, yeah, I think there's a generic issue in conference design that we need to think about conferences as learning events but often they're very badly designed as learning events. They become more kind of conveyor belts of short presentations with very limited discussion time, very little time to engage as colleagues and as human beings. Um, and I think part of that is the kinds of incentives that um, academics have to produce and show that they're producing. Um, and some of that transmits through entire research systems as well. Yeah, and because conferences often aren't explicitly designed as explicitly designed learning events. So what can be done? What are some of the things that can be done to design conferences as learning events? Here are some possibilities. Conversational and reflective spaces for deep peer learning. Um, Optimizing research conferences for opportunities for postgrad students to learn in different ways, many dimensions. Focusing on conferences as sites of knowledge generation and thinking about that explicitly, building that into the design. Designing conferences for whole person learning. This might explain why we did the, why this conference included the ludic stuff and the dancing and drawing yesterday. Extending learning beyond formal conference spaces using social media, using conferences very overtly for professional development and integrating conference design and evaluation. So those are just some of the approaches that have been suggested and used over many years, over several decades in fact, to design conferences as learning events, but many conferences still don't have any over design as learning events. Um, there were online conferences going back to the 1980s using what we think of now as very primitive technology, like phone lines between computers, text only, etc. But over time, in many waves of technology, um, there's been increasing reliance and use of synchronous communication, in some cases even um, virtual reality environments in some conferences. But the problem has been that that move away from asynchronous has gone along with the tendency to sometimes reproduce the worst structures of face-to-face -face conferences. So instead of spreading a conference out over a long, longer period, not just two or three days, maybe a week or sometimes longer, um, that everything gets squashed into the same two to three days as a normal conference, so-called. And that means that you end up with the same kind of production line system and conveyor belt system and not enough time ready for the reflective engagement and conversation. There are obviously some advantages to online conferences in terms of geographical access and reduced costs for participants, reduced travel time, lower carbon footprints, et cetera. But there's a question that remains all the way through in conference design, online conference design, and that is the question of remediation. Because the technologies that are used um, come with particular kinds of affordances and possibilities which may get us to rethink the notion of a conference. Um, and I think often the online conferences don't do much in terms of the remediation, just try to reproduce some elements of face-to-face -face conferences. 
Okay, so moving on a little bit during the pandemic. Okay, so um, the lockdowns that came across large parts of the world in March 2020 came on very quickly. So there were a lot of conferences that had already been planned. And one example here is the particle physics meeting, um, where in 2020, they already had people in Denver, in the States, who'd come for their global meeting, um, and others who basically um, saw the travel restrictions coming up and just canceled their bookings, etc. And the, the conference was canceled, but people met spontaneously, face to face and online. And the physicists were able to improvise because they were used to online communication and collaboration. Um, at the same time, um, at the start of the pandemic, we had a rush towards emergency remote conferences were not, which were not quite as good, not quite as well thought through, because it was like, um, what could we do to actually preserve some elements, the main elements of the conference, predominantly the presentation elements, because we, are, we don't have experience with this, we don't know the systems, we don't know the technologies, let's do the most we can, let's use the LMS, whatever it is, let's use Teams, and people clutched together. A lot of solutions that in some cases were very clumsy, uh, but just about worked for a narrow set of purposes. Um, so we saw online conferences being reinvented hundreds, possibly even thousands of times by people who had not known about online conferences before the pandemic, hadn't had any opportunity to engage with the literature, or in some cases, even with um, anyone with experience of designing online conferences. And the main challenges that came through in the design of the emergency remote conferences were around um, human connection and networking and social interaction. We felt that as a deficit, as a gap in the conference designs. Um, let's look at a couple of examples that were a bit different from that. So one example was our 2020 UCT Teaching and Learning Conference. It was the first time we'd had an online teaching and learning conference, even though there were people in the team who'd been designing and running online conferences since 2003, 2004. Um, what we found was that when we took the conference online, Suddenly, it wasn't just available to local people at University of Cape Town, it became an international conference. We had participants from across Africa particularly, but also from three or four other continents come and join us. Um, so it shifted the frame in very interesting ways. There were people in the team who were very interested in um, trauma-informed teaching. And we were so aware of the emotional and energy struggles that people were facing in this year of emergency remote teaching, when the transition was still having um, a, lot of, a lot of effects. So we put in place um, escape rooms, we had spaces for informal interaction, um, had a bit of um, jazz art chair dancing at the beginning of our plenary sessions, some of the, some of the days. Yeah, we did things to um, make it more suitable to basic human connection and um, yeah, a space where people could actually feel that their um, needs at that time were being recognized and a space where there's a lot of experience sharing and reflection about what was going on around emergency remote teaching and supporting students in such times. Another example was the 24 hour global gathering in September 2020, um, organized on open space design principles and open space privileges 
conversations initiated by participants and focuses on conversation rather than presentation. Okay, and there were spaces for mingling and quiet reflection, um, lots of dedicated reflection time, and you know, you could even pay what you could afford. Um, that kind of inclusivity. A few more examples. I'm moving on as fast as I can here using problem based learning design principles, um, centering inclusivity in the design, gamification, automation to facilitate talk scheduling, and for bigger global conferences, including regional keynote speakers and focuses. So, I think from here, really, it's a question of where we are heading. Will online conferences die as people move out of the pandemic? I don't think they will. Um, will that influence um, standard conference design? I suspect we may be moving more into a hybrid space. I'm going to shut up now to see if there's time for questions and inputs from anybody here. And please feel free to come to the chat or take your mic and talk. Let's see if there's anything in the chat. Not yet. Um, Tony, maybe I can ask, um, do you Go see the, the idea of having a hybrid conference um, as becoming a possible new norm? Or do you think they, it, we are going to see this divide? I either run a, a contact face-to-face -face conference and then or other people run an online conference. Um, and the reason why I'm asking this question is I attended for a first time now in a very long time, a face-to-face -face conference. And it was quite exciting to have that buzz around you. Um, so what's your opinion of then going into a hybrid environment versus either online or offline? Okay. Um, I think hybrid is where a lot of conferences will be heading. Um, I'm thinking of our teaching and learning conference this year at UCT where we have one day which is face to face and one day which is online, okay. which in a way um, fudges the issue because to actually get hybrid working really well when you have face to face and online simultaneously um, is logistically and technically a bit more difficult. Mm. Um, yeah. But I could see that hybrid is going to be very useful. Um, I think that a lot of conferences that were online are going to be rushing back to face to face. And they may be face to face entirely for a couple of years before they've kind of burned through that need to have the face to face buzz and they start thinking, okay, maybe we can bring back some of these people who can't make it face to face. But there are going to be conferences that go straight to hybrid, um, recognizing that they want access on that larger geographical frame and that larger scale, not just people who can actually get there in terms of the travel. Okay, just closing the window to keep some noise out. Okay, um, any other questions? Okay, and Linda, do you think conferences that are stretched over a longer time frame will be well attended? Um, yeah, Linda, I think what longer time frame would possibly require fewer sessions per day. Um, and I'm thinking of the MyFest um, educational festival, which basically limited itself to one or two sessions per day. So people could participate over a longer period and that conversations could evolve over a longer period. And I'm thinking of our Emerge online conferences, which actually used to run over two weeks, but we recognized that some people could only make one event per day and some people would actually disappear for most of the time and just appear for one day or three, two or three days. But the thing is about flexibility, isn't it, you know? Right, any other questions or comments at the moment? Because I know we, we're basically over time. Um, there was a comment from Marali. She, she just said, I think despite its challenges, online conferences will continue to be around. Marali, I, I agree with you entirely. 
Um, I think that um, there may be fewer online conferences in the next year or two than there have been during the pandemic because the energy is going to shift as people and societies um, start to think that the pandemic is over. I don't think it really is. I think that the people who are going back to 2019 are taking um, risks that we're not able to calculate yet. Um, but that's the trend. The trend is back towards a lot more face-to-face -face conferences over the next year or two. And thank you thank very you. much, everybody. <laughs> thank you from my side also. Thank you for the let our minds go again about how we think about conferences and even for us, how we need to address this or um, tackle this one for next year. Thank you so much, Tony. Um, please join the next session. You need to log out here and then go to the program and join. And remember all the nice things that's available in Kumo space, especially over lunch hour. Goodbye. Okay. Goodbye. Again. <laughs> <laughs>